Welcome to our final panel. What do soup, awesome, and change have in common? Avi Kaplan, right here, is a founding member of Awesome Ottawa and will be moderating this discussion. I don't know if you guys know, but Awesome Ottawa might be the simplest, most effective model of money granting I have ever seen. I'll let Avi get into all the details. But I hope you find this panel inspirational, and above all, it makes you push the norms and think way outside the box. This is going to be a little bit weird, uh, because none of us up here are fundraisers. And in fact, before Sam approached us about this event, it wasn't really something we thought a lot about. Uh, but I think there may be something that we have to say that will be interesting to you, and there are certainly things that we've heard today that are interesting to us. Um, I'm going to just let our panelists jump right into this and tell us a little bit about themselves. The, the, the answer to this question, by the way, because it's not clear from the subject of the panel, is uh, microphilanthropy. All of, these, all of these groups that are represented here are about microphilanthropy. Micro so let's just jump right into it. Why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and the organization that you're here representing? Hi everyone, my name is Brittany Fritch. I am a co-founding board member of an organization called Just Change. Uh, we're a micro-granting organization here in Ottawa. Uh, there are 12 of us on the board and every month we give $50 and then collectively every two months we give a $1,000 uh, grant to um, a person or an organization with uh, an idea or an initiative that will generate positive social or environmental uh, returns um, in the city of Ottawa. So we look for projects that um, are risky, that are untested, unproven, that won't be able to get money elsewhere, uh, and then we fund them. My name is Erin Lee. I'm one of the founding members of the Tontine Awards, which is a microgrant similar model to Just Change and Awesome Ottawa. We're seven women in the city that contribute $50 a month so that every two months we can give out an award to support women or a woman or a group of women or someone from a marginalized gender, a group of people from marginalized genders to come up with a creative project that contributes to the vibrancy of the city. And we include both Ottawa and Gatineau in that. And it's a bilingual initiative, so French or English. Um, before I do go on, I do want to acknowledge that we're on unceded Algonquin territory, especially in this incredible space that is the Wabano Center. Um, so yeah, we are really excited to be among these incredible organizations. And we just launched in November and just closed our second round of applications. Great. Hi everyone, I'm Valerie Stam. I'm a trustee with Awesome Ottawa. Awesome Ottawa um, has been around Ottawa for about four years now. Um, we are, um, the model is 10 people who give $100 of their own money every month for a pot of $1,000. And we give out $1,000 every month to something we think is awesome. No strings attached. Uh, so it works in uh, weird and wonderful ways. Um, we operate on consensus as a group. Um, and actually, we're currently sitting at 15 people instead of 10, um, which is very fun. Our projects, uh, the grants that we give range from um, things that are more on the social good side to things that are maybe more technologically uh, innovative. So we sort of describe that spectrum as um, the orphans and the flamethrowers, and there's always a bit of a, a tension between them and, and which will we fund. Um, yeah, and one of my favorite projects was uh, a lunchtime dance party on Spark Street that happened uh, one August, which was great. Thank you. And uh, I'm Dan Monafru, and I'm here to represent Soup Ottawa. Um, this is something I thought about and, and started about a, about a year ago, so we've gone through four um, episodes so far. Um, so it's a little bit different than the three uh, models you've heard so far in that it's, I would emphasize the participatory nature of the micro grant. Um, so, and the easiest way to describe it would be to, um, I'll, I'll tell you what we do. So, um, people show up, we kind of throw a big party for people and then hope that people will indeed show up. Um, and for $10 that they give at the door, um, people receive a little gelato spoon and um, that they keep to, for voting purposes. Um, for that 
they uh, receive a bowl of soup free of charge, part of the, the ticket. Um, and throughout the um, evening, they listen to uh, presentations that we've curated beforehand. Um, and they, at the end of the presentations, they, uh, they vote on the best one with their little gelato spoon. And uh, all the money collected at the door um, goes to, to the winning project. So um, we've, we've held four of these so far. It's, it's held seasonally. Um, our last one, we raised uh, $1,100. So we had um, uh, over 100 people contributing uh, $10 each, uh, besides sort of volunteers and other people. Um, it's absolutely you know, uh, volunteer run and base, so um, we don't make any money on it. So the volunteers would just sort of organize it. Um, and we also try to get um, the, the food donated, the space donated, and sort of um, everything else involved is sort of in kind. Um, you know, we've had social media donated to us, you know, so we live tweet on, on, the, on the evening. So I, I think we'll, uh, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. But uh, so, so all four of these uh, are project based. And Valerie gave us one example of a project. Can, can we hear from others what sorts of things have been supported? Uh, I can jump in. We have funded one project so far, and we are so excited, one, by the applications that came in, like unbelie un unbelievable creativity in the city. It just blew us away to see the kinds of things that people wanted to do. The winning project was by a spoken word artist in the city, um, and she you know, talked about her journey of how she became um, somebody who really wanted to speak her voice and how she wanted to support other people in the community to speak their voice. So her project is actually to run free workshops for especially marginalized communities in the city um, in developing spoken word uh, skills. Perhaps I'll go next. Um, so we've Just Change has been around for about a year. We've done, um, I think we're on our eighth grant, maybe our ninth now. Um, our most recent one was to a nonprofit called Accessibility for Humanity, um, whose um, initiative was on making Ottawa businesses more accessible to people in wheelchairs, really simply by um, uh, matching the businesses up with a, um, a small, portable uh, wheelchair ramp. Super simple. Um, and just an amazing cause. There was another one of our, I think our second grantee um, was um, to fund a, a, a project to make, um, they were called Bumbrellas. So um, bicycle seat covers for people who cycle um, so that their seat doesn't get wet. And it was made out of um, recycled umbrellas and NCC banners, um, which was just the social media on that was fun. <laughs> cool. Well, um uh, I'm trying to think of another favorite project of mine. Uh, we also funded for Nuit Blanche um, an installation of a yarn bombed bus. So the O Town bombers got together and covered a, a bus uh, with yarn, crocheting and knitting. In fact, the O Town bombers emerged only because of that event. This, this was the, right. the birth of the O Town bombers. Yes, it was yeah. the birth of the O Town bombers. So they've continued to yarn bomb the city in other creative ways. Um, we also, the most recent one we've done was um, funding uh, pop-up public astronomy nights. Uh, so that's coming soon to areas in the city around you. Um, and uh, another really fun one that we did was uh, guerrilla wayfinding. So um, mm -hmm. uh, someone in the city is interested in putting signs along bike paths about where to find interesting um, locations or uh, services or shops um, along more uh, unusual means. So not on street side, but more pedestrian means. So yeah. Cool. We've had four um, um, sort of prize winners so far. Um, the last one was a few weeks ago, and it was won by uh, Jamie Coble, who is starting a business um, to, to create Aboriginal walking tours around town. Um, she has um, Métis and Cree heritage, and she's uh, wishing to impart her knowledge to, to people around town. So she's created this wonderful tour. She wants to bring in elders around, along the way. Um, so that, that was the winning project. Um, what was a little bit different about this last uh, uh, round that we've done is that we've uh, moved it to the online a little bit as well so in, in selecting the participants. Um, and so uh, the, 
we've sort of, because it was just sort of the, the people organizing who, who got to curate the six projects that got to present um, at every event, we wanted to involve people along the way and so uh, we introduced a, a Web Super's Choice Award and so we had people uh, voting for uh, one project that was sort of the popular vote and that uh, group was um, guaranteed a spot um, even if they didn't necessarily meet our criteria or um, you know what have you and so uh, Jamie actually won the popular vote as well um, so she was invited to um, to present um, the other thing I would say about uh, prizes is that um, we don't so much emphasize the monetary value of the prizes um, we consider the six people who get to present at each event um, kind of winners because uh, we ask them to um, tell the crowd what other needs they have um, that are non-monetary and so we ask them to say I can give you examples of people in the past who've uh, presented uh, for instance this, this guy created a, a platform for a dance something it was electronic and very cool and um, his mother was kicking him out of his garage so he had to find space for this platform and somebody said okay here's you know I, I can offer you my garage so it's things like that, you know, people saying, you know, I, I want to start this up, but I don't have any web skills. And so somebody would um, sort of um, put up their hand and say, let's talk after. So it's, it's really not just about the $1,000. It's about the, the awareness and the, you know, you get, you get a platform to, to promote your project. And I've talked to lots of people who have said, um, you, you won't believe how many connections I made that night and my business has shot up or, you know, my, the awareness of what I'm trying to do. So many supporters. So I think that's part of the prize um, of the night. The question that usually comes up at this point in the conversation about uh, these groups now is, well, what, what about accountability and reporting and, and the Canada Revenue Agency? So what, what about that? <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, what's, what's probably consistent with all our models, and you guys can speak to it, is um, for Just Change, we set out to make the, um, the process as easy as possible. So the application form could take five minutes. We do not require any reporting back. Um, we recognize that $1,000 for an organization is a very small amount of money. Um, we're also not interested in reading someone's annual report or like a big funder report. We are not a charity. We don't get tax receipts. Like I would say for the administrative stuff, it's, um, it's, it's negligible. It's just, I mean, our time going into it and setting stuff up on the website. But we um, really look to our grantees to be able to communicate back to us what they achieved with it. And we leave it up to them um, to do it on their own terms. And because um, they're so highly engaged with us and because so much of, of the, the prize is not just money but the network and the excitement. We get so excited about these projects and we talk about them um, that the, the winners like want to keep us engaged and want to tell us what they're doing. I know Awesome Ottawa thinks about it as a, a sort of coordinated gift. Yeah, I think we take our no strings attached sort of byline very, very seriously and uh, in the past, um, winners have come back to us and for whatever reason were unable to, to complete their project and you know our questions are sort of along the lines of, well, do you think at some point you might do something really interesting or awesome? Then you know, keep it. We don't we don't want it back. Like we gave this to you to do something and whether or not it looks exactly like what you proposed is is you know, that happens. Um, we also we really like the simplicity of the model as well and, and feel pretty strongly about keeping it that way as well. I know when we have given money to registered charities, which doesn't happen often but has happened, um, they offer sometimes to give us a tax receipt and, and we've said no in the past because we don't really have any, like how would we use that? We're, we're a collection of 15 individuals, like who would that go to? We're not an organization. so. It would just keep it as simple as possible. Let's jump ahead to this question of the sort of larger ecosystem for these. So Soup is part of a, or comes from a larger movement. Awesome Ottawa is part of a global movement. Sure. So um, Soup started um, 
It's not exactly clear when. Um, Detroit and Chicago are fighting for when it started, 2006, 2007, something like that. Um, it's spread all over the states. Uh, I think it's happening in over 100 con uh, cities in the, in the US. And um, there's a few places in Canada that now model it. It's, it's a very loose model. It's not um, the same. Uh, it goes from, in Toronto, uh, a similar project is called Feast. Um, and they have a four course meal. So it's, uh, I think, $35 to enter. And there's live music and sort of a fancier uh, dinner and more of a fundraiser thing, and I think they, they only do it twice a year. Uh, so you know, there's models in the states where uh, you know they, you pay a hundred dollars to attend, and it's, again, it's once a year, and six thousand people show up, and it's kind of like the, the the life of the of the small town. It's like they, everybody remembers the big party. So I don't, I wouldn't say that there's a there's consistency in the model. When we adapted it to to, you know what we were trying to do is uh, create something that's that's very sort of common. So um, that's why we're always serving soup and bread because it's so easy to to make, and you know it's 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 really not about the soup. It's about the the community that happens. So it, it varies. And uh, Awesome started in Boston in 2009. Um, some folks, uh, mostly from the startup community, got together, and the first project they funded was this ginormous hammock in a park. Um, and then it just grew from there. Now there are over uh, 50 chapters all over the world. Uh, awesome Ottawa was, I believe, the third uh, chapter to, to start. And it's just started by word of mouth. I think each location runs things slightly differently. It's a very loose model, again, similar to soup. Um, decision making is done differently in every chapter. Uh, I said earlier, we operate on consensus. There are other groups that operate on voting or um, different models like that. Um, and some chapters are actually theme-based as opposed to geographically based. So there is an awesome food, for example, um, that only funds food-related projects or food security-related projects. Um, but most, are ge most have a geographical focus. To give a sense of scale, so we're just coming up on the million dollar mark probably in the next couple couple of months. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah, yeah. globally. Uh, yeah. Ottawa is coming up on the $50,000 mark, which is a lot more money than I expected people were going to consistently take out of their pockets and yeah. put on the table. Let's, let's talk about why people are doing this. Uh, Aaron, you're the most recent group for doing this. Why, why, did, you, why did you start doing this? Uh, I mean, I think we've heard a lot about the benefits and sort of attributes of this kind of model. Uh, personally, in terms of the Tontine Wards in particular, that intersection of women and arts, it's really about trust and politics. Trust in terms of what Valerie was talking about, that we can trust people to do amazing things and we don't need to track what they're doing. We don't need to monitor how well they're doing it. We can trust in con contributions from individuals to really make a difference. Difference. And I think the other thing is around politics. Women's funding, arts funding is being cut. And I think that a lot of sectors that um, the charitable sector is engaged in, we see increasing cuts. Um, and, and not an over-reliance, I think the government has a really important place to fund this kind of work, but we see that pot of funding shrinking. So I really appreciate that we are able to provide a source of funding that has no ties, and we can say what we want to say, and we can encourage others to say what needs to be said. Dan, you said earlier that part of this comes out of a frustration with the traditional model. Can I put you on the spot? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I guess, you know, it's, it's place-based um, events for me really um, create this sort of energy in the room that you, you really don't have otherwise. And as much as I love receiving, um, you know, something in the mail, it, I, you know, you, you're never going to get um, as excited as you are meeting people and seeing their ideas come alive. And so, um, yeah, you know, frustration on many fronts. Frustration of writing a grant that takes, you know, two months to write, and uh, you know, it never ends, and then you don't even get a, an email acknowledging that they received your application. Uh, a frustration that, um, you know, people are, you know, don't feel empowered to, 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 to start new things, to do new things, and uh, I think, you know, one major. Um, 
motivating factor for me was really getting people together that are in the same neighborhood. We have lots of people who are working on the exact same thing, and they, they, they live literally two or three streets apart, and they don't know what the other is doing. So I think putting people and amazing people on a platform and then you know having sharing a meal with them creates this amazing sense that, yes, uh, you can create beautiful things. Yes, these people are doing, let's support them and you know start our own. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it is a frustration, but it's also kind of a, I think it's a, it, it's, it's starting to be a, you know, looking at a, at a beautiful thing and a model that, that works better. So this works for community scale things. Is it, is it disruptive in a larger way, or is it just something that happens in small groups and doesn't matter to the people in this room? I, th I think, um, I think the model is scalable, and the reason why I think that is because the evidence is here. I mean, Ottawa started with, with one micro-granting organization, Awesome Ottawa, and now there's four, um, and rumors of others starting. And so I think, um, I think the, the possibilities are there. Uh, how it relates to this context, I think that would be more for, for you to, to share with us. Um, I also think that you know, the creativity is there in Ottawa. Uh, there's a lot of critique around Ottawa being boring and things like that. And I, from what I've seen and from the, the grants we've all funded and the applications we get, and as Aaron was saying, I, I, don't, I don't see that being the case at all. I think there's a lot of creativity in the city, a lot of really interesting, exciting projects to be, to be funded and ideas to, to get support. So do you think, do you think that it grows the pie? Or are the members of your groups choosing to do this instead of putting an envelope in the mail? I think it absolutely grows the pie. Um, when you talk about it being disruptive, I think if you ask the Just Change board members why they started, you get a, a different answer from each of them. But um, for me, it, it really is the idea that a lot of the time young people are asked to contribute in not very meaningful ways to an organization. Um, maybe a small donation, sometimes stuffing envelopes. Um, being able to get engaged with Just Change was um, being valued not just for the monetary contribution, which we can, we can give, um, but also being able to make decisions and being engaged right from the beginning of issuing a request for applications um, to deciding by consensus who gets the money. Uh, it's an intensely engaging process. And because we get so excited, you get you know, 12 people in a room asking them where to put their money, you debate and you, you mm -hmm. defend the, the initiatives that you're really excited about and everyone gets excited. And then we spread that excitement. So I, I definitely think it's growing the pie. Um, I, I don't even see the fact that there's four, organize, or four loose organizations existing in Ottawa as competition. We, we show up to each other's events, we promote each other, we've talked about doing a just awesome soup with a side of tontine something. <laughs> um, just because it, it's, I think that excitement and that momentum of getting other people mobilized um, and making new connections is, is part of it. So I'm I, gonna, th I, sorry, If I can digress a little, or, or defer a little bit, um, I, I think it might, it might not grow the pie so much, and beca partly because of my own motivations for, for getting involved in this are that uh, I don't like um, to only give my money to charities that have a charitable status number so I can get a tax receipt. And so part of why I do this is political and is a chance for me to give money to, to people and things and ideas that I think are worthy, but that the government, you know, may not, it may not fall under their categories of what fits or, or whatever. So. And, and that touches on the last question that I think I'll put to each of the four of you before we turn to the audience to start directing the conversation, which is, what does this really have to do with fundraising? And given that we're an event here about the next generation, what, you know, what, what's the demographic angle to all of this? I think, and we've heard it already from the first panel, and I'm sure in the different breakout sessions, activism, giving is activism. And I think that's really powerful, and I think that's what we're all talking about here. I see so many opportunities for those um, leadership volunteer opportunities that folks were talking about in the first panel to like start little groups of volunteers to do mini micro grants. What's that project you want to get done? Get them on it. Like incredible opportunities with this model for, for charitable organizations or non charitable. For me, it's um, really, you know, like again, going back to empowerment, it's. Um, there's this group in the States called Relational um, Giving, and 
Um, it's you know, sh telling people that you can just form a, a group together around the table and say, okay, what are we going to do with our money? Pooling those resources together and empowering people. So it's, you know, uh, it doesn't have to be $10 once every four months. It can be $200 every week if you have the money. And you know, so I, I, I see it, you know, sort of dis completely disrupting the, you know, let's give money to, to my charity of choice to get the tax receipt. You can be sitting around your living room on a, on a Wednesday evening and saying, okay, what are we going to support this week? Um, it doesn't have to be organizations. It could be, you know, the, the group in the States um, supports, uh, that's why it's called relational. You support people that are um, once uh, one degree of separation, um, you know, apart. So, um, you know, a friend can come and say, my, my uh, friend's fridge broke. And uh, you know we need to pool money together to fix that fridge, and so it's sort of you know people and you you, you pool resources together. It works in the states better because of the you know medical insurance. That's sort of what they fund mainly. But um, I see it replacing it, and it, you know soup is a I think a part of that of being relational and um, you know place-based meetings interactions. Brittany, do you want the last word, or should we go to the audience? I think we can go to the audience. Okay. So uh, somebody, I hope, is going to be able to run around with the mic. If you put your, if you put your hand up, uh, we're going to try to do clusters of questions. So we'll take two or three at a time, and then let the panel uh, play with them a bit. Uh, please identify yourself when you ask your question, and please end your question with a question mark. Thank you. Do you have criteria that you put forth? Um, obviously, yes. Um, and how many, could you maybe elaborate a little bit on what some of the criteria is? Like, does it have to be charitable? Could it be anything? And how many speakers do you usually have on average? So let's grab a couple of questions yep. and then we'll come back to criteria. So okay. are others that we'll throw into the mix? Um, if you wanted to get involved with one of your organizations, are there opening spots or does the membership renew every year? How does that work? Okay, so a question about getting involved. Do we have any others? Behind you, Sam? I don't know, just a random question. Have you thought of going to Dragon's Den and getting this going everywhere? It's okay. fantastic. Okay, let's take those three questions. Uh, why don't we start with criteria? Uh, I guess it was a soup question, but we could sure. certainly all take a stab at it. Yeah, so uh, we do have some criteria. Uh, it has to, we, we do themes every, every event. So uh, the last one was called Giving Voice, so it has to relate to the theme. It has to be achievable. If people say they want to fly to the moon with $1,000, it's not going to work. Um, it has to be original or creative, um, and also sort of this thing of additionality, like are they going to receive funding elsewhere. So those are some of the, the things we look at. Um, check out supottawa.ca. We have a lot of these things in the About page. Um, and there is six people that present. Um, usually it's five. Uh, we have a wild card, and we also invite the people who have won the previous event to give a two-minute spiel on what happened to the money. That's our reporting. It's, it's uh, volunteer-based if they want to come. So we reserve some uh, place there. And Other thoughts on criteria while well, we're talking about criteria? Value added, I think, is a big one, right? For us, anyway. Like, some folks are coming with a project. Maybe it's a 10 grand project, and our 500 bucks is kind of a drop mm -hmm. in the well. So we want to see something where, if you didn't have that $500, it might not happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it kind of limits the scale of it. Mm -hmm. I think for us in Ottawa, it's, it's just plainly that it'd be awesome. <laughs> and that, of course, is interpreted differently by everybody in the room. So that's where the discussions and the consensus building gets really interesting. Um, but generally, I'd say um, we tend to go for things where there's a, some sort of community experience. Um, there's some sort of um, uh, giving back in some way, whether that's to innovation or to giving back socially. Um, and we, we look for creativity and, and the wow factor, too. So getting involved. Getting involved. Um, that's actually a really good question. It's something that uh, just change we've talked about. Right now, we haven't, um, we don't have space to bring people into our board. Um, but we've had um, expressions of interest to start new just change chapters um, outside of Ottawa, which is fantastic. 
Um, it's also something that we're looking at how we can um, bring people actually into the, the Ottawa uh, chapter. We just don't have an answer yet. We're still pretty new. Um, before we opened it up more broadly, we wanted to make sure that we got our model right and that um, what we were doing was effective. So um, it's a really good question, though. Uh, for the Tontines, we're probably looking for more people. We're a small group. One of the things we've been trying to think about is how to involve people that don't necessarily contribute financially, and we do have some members that don't, don't contribute financially, but that we really want to make sure we have a more diverse set of voices that contribute to that decision making. The soup model is really good for that. Um, in terms of uh, other opportunities, please come talk to me. Dream phase two is that instead of giving microgrant every couple of months, is to have an annual win women's arts award. So looking for more people to start sort of a second phase. Uh, awesome Ottawa is a bit of a revolving door. We constantly have new people come in and then uh, sometimes unfortunately have people who have to leave because of life circumstances changing, whatever. $100 isn't a small commitment every month. Um, but we are, the door is open um, and we usually ask for an introduction via email and then we have a conversation around, you know, would this person fit? Are they tapping into networks we may not already be tapped into? That sort of thing. Um, we are running into the problem with 15 people, though. We're, we're having too much money, actually, every month. What do we do with it all? Um, so, yeah, there's conversations around what that's going to look like going forward, and I, I definitely think the idea is to expand as we can. Um, so stay tuned. Um, for soup, um, it's, I really see it as a collective, so it's a bunch of people coming together, having meetings. Um, People come and go uh, because there's no, it's just a $10 commitment and some time. Uh, there's no real, you know, sort of commitment that's financial. Uh, we usually ask people, we have a, you know, form on our website. I want to volunteer to, you know, serve soup or something. So we ask people who are new to the concept to just come for one event and maybe volunteer, um, you know, loading dishes or something. Um, and then the next event, if they want to, you know, they understand the model, uh, we, we ask them to come on board. We, we try to limit it. I think a good number is about 10. After that, it kind of gets uh, messier and you, you kind of waste people's time in organizing. So um, as long as there's sort of a 50-50 a mix of people who have been there before and can support the vision, I'm, I'm happy with, uh, with new people coming on board. So it's, it's worked out so far. So does anybody want to tackle the Dragon Stand question or should we just say yes? <laughs> sure. I, Okay, well, I, I think one of the, the biggest things why people like the soup concept is that it's, it's really kind of um, anti the establishment and anti corporate. Um, so I think if you try to, you know, make it a big thing and go on TV, you really lose the, you know, the feel of, you know, everything is, you know, our, our logo is, is hand drawn in about 10 minutes and uh, it was intentional. We wanted to show that you don't need a fancy logo. Um, I think they did a pretty good job with it, but it's um, you know it's it's more of a as long if if you sell out then um, I think some of the magic is is lost, so we're we're trying to keep it that way. Let's try another round of questions. First of all, thank you so much. I think this is really sexy stuff happening right here. <laughs> I love it. And the question is, you you collect all these these really cool proposals, if you want to call it. Uh, you might have answered this already even during your speech, but I might have not caught it. But do you present unselected ones to the public somewhere? Like, is there a platform that mm -hmm. it's not planted? And I'm so glad you asked that question. I'm, I, I don't know him. Um, so on, on the Soup Ottawa's website, we have this thing called uh, the Repository of Goodness database, um, and it's sort of my, my brainchild. And I'm, I'm trying to get everybody on board, and they're slowly coming to it. Um, it's a database of all the people who have applied. Um, a little blurb on sort of a summary because I don't want, I, I really feel that ideas are precious. Um, and what people are doing at one moment in time uh, will be replicated, will be, you know, will come again. Um, and so it's important to really capture that moment in time. And so uh, if you look on our website, just uh, take a look there. Um, you see all the projects who have applied. Um, because, you know, only six get to really be showcased in public, but there's, you know, the rest of, you know, 20 or 25 
um, who kind of get lost. And so people can check out that website and say, well, this is a, a really good way to check out the pulse of what's happening in Ottawa creatively. Or, and you know, if people want to encourage those people or you know, get involved or say, hey, I'm working on a similar thing from a different angle, we have a contact information for them. Um, so that's, that's exactly the, the spirit of it. Let's grab two or three more questions, and then we'll probably be out of time. So can I see if there's anybody else wanting to grab? Otherwise, I've got lots of questions. Oh, got one up here. Thanks. Um, so maybe a comment. Uh, you asked earlier about the connection between what you're doing collectively and, and the fundraising, the philanthropy that goes on now. I think when looking at diversity and inclusion, I think of uh, being able to incorporate many different groups. So not just Next Gen and the reason with this series, we, it, there's so many different groups that there's a focus on. There's a lot of ethnocultural communities in Ottawa that do this model in terms of building up their own communities. Mm -hmm. So from being from the Ethiopian community and with my cousin behind me, she can support me on this. Uh, we, you know, we contribute a certain amount to a pot and one person gets that amount. Mm -hmm. And this is enough to get people to be able to do something like put a down payment on a house. You know, so this model is being used in, in, in some of those communities and so, um, I guess maybe just to throw it out there that it is happening in other ways, and uh, we're you know a lot of organizations are always struggling to diversify their board or their their you know philanthropic pursuits, so who they're getting donors from and stuff. So this is a model that maybe it might not play out in the day to day as much, but uh, in terms of who you're attracting, this is something that's being used in other communities that could be used within our day-to-day -day fundraising. Yeah, I think you're right. There's certainly a lot of links to saving circles, and, and you're reminding me of a, of a book that I would actually recommend if you haven't seen it before called Portfolios of the Poor. Uh, tra track it down if you're, if you're interested in these topics. That's actually the inspiration for the Tontine name. Tontine is a, Frank, is a French word, and it's used in Francophone Africa by women's groups that do exactly what you're describing. And we wanted to recognize the awesomeness of this model, but also recognize that this awesome work is happening in the Global South. And I would in many times just want to jump in on that. I, I see sort of a natural progression to the soup model um, in participatory budgets. Mm -hmm. um, and so Calgary's done this. Um, you know, they, they took sort of a little bit of their surplus and said, um, you know, what do you want to use the money for? And so people could vote on five projects that had been curated, and some of that surplus money was, was put into what people wanted. So uh, why not have sort of 300 people that were randomly selected from all over town when budget time comes um, you know, to, to get people involved in that sense, to say, I had a say in that. And you know, mm -hmm. I, I have it all figured out in my head. You get counselors to, you know, to be champions for one cause, and then at the end of the year, you hold them accountable if their project worked or not. So there's lots of, absolutely, it works on many layers from the, from the very small to the very large. I hope politics goes that way. Mm -hmm. I see we have another question here. And let's grab at the same time any outstanding ones, and then I think we'll wrap up. Hi. I was very inspired by all of your conversation um, today. I'm, uh, you're all very local, community-based grantors. Um, you fund small community organizations and, and projects. Um, a lot of us in this room are from larger organizations. Uh, how do we sort of tap into your energy, your enthusiasm at all? And you know, do you see a disconnect between larger organizations trying to tap into what you do are you too jaded to deal with us, you know, the, the cancers of the world and the United Ways of the world? How do we sort of reconcile, um, you know, tapping into your energy um, and, and what you're doing from a larger organizational standpoint? Because that's a challenge in the room today um, amongst, uh, amongst people that I've, I've been speaking to today. Do we have other questions we should grab at the same time, or can we end on that one? So we're going to wrap up on that question. Rapid fire, maybe going down the road? I love that question. And the reason I love that question is because I've been in rooms where um, I've heard um, established organizations say um, that youth are just leaving and starting their own thing, and we don't need them to start their own thing. We need them to join us. And I think, well, maybe you need to join us. Um, and not trying to bring us into your organization necessarily so that we can become more like you, but maybe you try and approach our organization so, we be, so, so you can become more like us. And I, do, I don't mean that in a, in a negative way. I just think it's, it's shifting the perspective of um, how you are going to get that excitement. Um, 
why don't you get excited with us instead of trying to get us to get you excited with you? I, I don't know if you understand, understand that shift, and maybe you can um, speak more to it. I, I, I think that um, I don't. I work for Imagine Canada. I don't have any uh, problem with established organizations. I think that you guys exist. Uh, established organizations exist for um, the good works that you do. Um, I just want to know how I can engage with you the best that I can. I, if I could speak to that a little bit, I think. I think if if large organizations could look at how to make involvement or giving more meaningful, I think that would be a real draw. Um, we were talking earlier about what motivates us to get involved, and I think it is very much the hands-on aspect, the fact that we have control over decision-making and control over where our money goes. So you can get creative with that and in that space as a large organization. Um, I think there are a lot of opportunities. I, it's, it's a great question. I, I think it's sort of the, the distinction between the, the professional world and the personal world. Um, it, it cost me personal sweat to put on soup events. Um, so I think big organizations just, you know, they, they need to, to show some skin in the game that's, that's personal. It's not, you know, it's not some glamorous thing that, you know, at the end of the day you go home and go back to your hotel. It's, it's like, I care about this thing and I'm, I'm going to stay there and, and be there. And it's, I, I think it shows in the attitude of the people, and, you know, not, not to belittle wonderful professionals, but it, I, there's a distinction when you, when you talk personal versus professional. I think Fab said something in the first panel about when he started and talked about excitement. And that, I think, is what we all feel when we do this. And I think it's hard sometimes as a large organization to communicate that. But if there are ways of doing that. Because I think people want to be on the winning team. Yeah. Sounds like a good place to end. And I think there are interesting conversations that can continue during the reception. Certainly a question that this raises for me is, you know, can you can you cure cancer passing the hat to your to your friends? Can you build a new hospital wing, uh, you know, passing the passing the plate around? Maybe. I guess it remains to be seen. So I'm going to introduce Sam back up. We'll stay here while you. Wrap up the event, or shall we? Thank you so much, and all the panel. Thank you so much.